And it is very frustrating that, you know, LGBT people have the right to marry in the Republic of Ireland and Wales and Scotland and in England. And then you have Northern Ireland, which it happens to be a backwater. <laughs> Okay, I'm sat at one of my favourite venues in London. It is the RVT, the Royal Vox Tavern. I'm very happy to say I'm with Conleth Kane. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. You have a busy time at the moment. You've got an album out. It's called Proud, live in London. Really, really excited to get it out there, finally, after two years of writing. Do you get the nerves, though, before, before you go on? I suppose everybody does, don't they? I'm terrible, especially with the last one because I knew it was being recorded live for an album. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was uh, before I went on stage, I had some food, uh, some cod goujons because uh, it was at uh, the Crazy Cox. I can sense uh, what's coming. I'm not sure I'm going to like this story. During the first song, <laughs> a piece of fish was like <laughs> caught between my teeth. So anytime I had like a break, I was like <laughs> trying, fishing trying, it out. Literally. literally. <laughs> when the tide comes in, I'll never drown Cause I feel your love all around. Definitely as the artist, you put a lot of pressure on yourself, you know, because it's very exposing when you go out on stage and it's your writing, your work, your money, everything's... You know, it's a lot on my head when the album was being recorded because I really wanted... To, I was striving for perfection, but what is perfection and actually now that i listen to it back you know there's real heart in the performance yeah. you know if, if i do say so myself yeah, I, yeah. you know because it's i really really sing the songs from my heart because that's where they were written from i'm proud of what i do mm -hmm. i'm proud of what you see when i look in the mirror See me. Right and proud. There was a political message behind it, especially when you've got a party like the DUP, who are the biggest party in Northern Ireland. And it's not just about gay rights, it's about women's rights, it's about Irish language speakers' rights. It's a, this party really, you know, they have it in for a lot of people. It's not just the LGBT community. Yeah. Human and rights, isn't human it? Human rights, up 100%. Mm. Growing up in Northern Ireland as a gay person, you know, it had a huge effect on my mental health. And I suppose I didn't really deal with it properly until I wrote Pride. Cause I'm proud And I will sing it loud I don't care anymore, no, no, cause I'm me. When a lot of people hear Pride, you know, it, it speaks to them. And I, I wrote it for everyone who, you know, has had struggle in their lives. I wrote it to sing at Belfast Pride, actually. And um, I wanted to have a song, like an anthem for a gay person to sing and to relate to. and. It's become my kind of signature song. Oh my God, emotional stuff at Belfast Pride. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a real moment for me. And I had my mum in the audience. And, and it is very frustrating that, you know, LGBT people have the right to marry in the Republic of Ireland and Wales and Scotland and in England. And then you have Northern Ireland, which it happens to be a backwater. I don't care anymore, no, no, because I'm me. As an artist, I feel it's kind of my job as a gay man from that part of the world to write about stuff like that. It's really important to me to, you know, not, I'm not going to stop addressing this until it's solved. Good for you. I'm not going to shut up. Yeah. And, um, I will keep singing about shit like this until, until I am an equal citizen on my homeland. Every time the plane hits the runway at Belfast, I get a sense of anxiety, you know, what that childhood fear kind of creeps in and I'm like oh you know this is my home and I shouldn't feel like this um, so a song like Proud for me is my way of saying to political parties like the DUP that I'm not okay with it and I will strive for equality and I'll do that through my music. We don't have a government in Northern Ireland at the minute so it's really hard to debate these kind of issues so it is kind of a it's in limbo and why should people's 
rights be in limbo because of politics. It's it's it's, it's, it's difficult. Keep on fighting, Conleth. Yeah. Keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> we need you. Well, this is it. I'm not a politician, but I'm a songwriter, and if yeah. I ca- if I can use art to kind of you know make one person think differently, or then I've kind of done my job. Use it as a power. Exactly. Now, talking of LGBT issues, I mean, what better place to interview you here at mm. the RVT? I know. I should say thanks to James and everybody here at the RVT because it is one of the best venues. I mean, it really is the heartbeat of London because so much goes on here, and mm-hmm. it's. You know, you've got alternative queer culture, you've got the history. I mean, for goodness sake, Princess Diana was smuggled in by Freddie Mercury here. I know, I love that story. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's so cool. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And you had Tracy Thorne DJing just a few months ago. We've got Belinda Carlisle on stage soon here mm-hmm. as well, raising money for charity. It's, yeah. yeah, it's great. It's a great place. You, you've been here. You were here on New Year's Eve. I was here on New Year's Eve. I had best night. It was such a good crack. Now, I don't know if you are a fan. I'm going to assume you are, because I think most people that I know are. Uh, are you a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not? No! Seriously? No, I haven't watched one episode. I'm shocked. I hand am. back your gay card. <laughs> I know, I know. I, sh- I should really be into because every other gay person is. I don't really follow trends like that. Okay, I'm... maybe that's good. That's refreshing. <laughs> well, actually, I went to... A few years ago, they had like a, a UK trial at Café de Paris, and my friend Lady Portia de Monte from Northern Ireland was one of the ten finalists. So RuPaul was a judge, and Amazing. and Katie Price and um, uh, Jonathan Ross. So I got to be like a plus one for my friend, and that's the only real taster I've had of RuPaul. I know who uh, Courtney Act is. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Well, you must know that it's coming to the UK. I do know that it's coming to yeah. the UK. And actually, uh, there's a drag queen in London who I'm obsessed with, and who I think is really talented, Margot Marshall. Oh, right, yeah. And I really hope that, you know, she is one of the finalists. And if she is, then I'll be, I'll be watching it. Well, the prize, you must know this as well, is $100,000. I was going to ask you what you would do with that money. Probably put some of it into my music. Yeah. Um, I would record. I would go on a few holidays, obviously and property. <laughs> Bloody hell, I mean, you need a few holidays. You were just telling me you do this all on your own. You yeah. pretty much do the whole marketing thing and social mm-hmm. media. So I self-manage myself, I do my gigs, I do my writing, I produce the record, I funded the record, I book all my you know, performances, I do my social media, I do my own press. I wonder who called you in the night wonder if he holds you as tight I wonder if I will ever hold you again I wonder what, where, how, why and when It is getting to a stage now where it is getting more busy which I'm very grateful for and it will come a time when I would like to hand over all of that stuff to someone else but at the moment it, you know, I get a bit of a kick out of controlling everything myself. Control freak. I, well, I, when I was with a management last year, for example, I, I was constantly phoning them and I was nagging. And it's just because I want everything to be done right and I want to make sure it's being done. And at least when I'm doing it, I know it's being done and it's done how I want it to be done. I wonder how you feel now that I'm gone. I wonder if you will ever hear this song I wonder if I will ever see you again I wonder what, where, how, why and when Now you are a a true performer in the sense of not just music but theatre and acting as well. Uh I didn't realise this, you were in Casualty. Yet ten years ago. Yeah, I had a lot more hair on my head. And less <laughs> Haven't hair we all though? On my face. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was ten years ago. I was on. I mean, I was in like eleven episodes. So, um, and I had like a few lines here and there. Blink and you'd miss me. But it was a great experience. When I think back to my theatre days, I knew nothing about politics. I knew not. Everything was about you know. I'd be in constant contact with my agent, t- talk, you know, learning scripts, learn, going to auditions, constant to and fro and trying to keep up a job in between and life was stressful. It wasn't until about three, three years ago I experimented with writing a dance track 
um, top lining for a friend and that went really well it got like played on major stations and gay deal being one of them yes and <laughs> you know big stations took on the song and then I was like oh maybe maybe I should go down this route and maybe have a little I got such a buzz from just writing a top line for a dance track and then about seven months later I went through a breakup and I wrote a song called The Grass Is Greener and from then I started churning out these songs and kind of developed a fan base just from, from that. When the world is darker than I can understand when nothing turns out the way I planned When the sky turns grey and there's no end in sight When I can't sleep through the lonely night Jock Mooney Oh yeah He's a designer, a friend of yours Yeah He, wasn't he on Lorraine or something? He had a Lorraine Kelly yeah. t-shirt and huh. his t-shirt was on the show. That's right. I mean, his t-shirts are doing really well um, at the moment. He's he, great. He did my album cover. So basically, my friend Ross at uh, Silverthorn Photography, who does all my photos, because I hate, hate, hate having my picture taken. I don't like doing photo shoots. I don't like any of that at all. Uh, it's funny, I watched an interview with Ariana Grande yesterday, and she says she hates hates getting her picture taken, hates right. photo shoots. I'm like, oh, I hate it. I don't think I'm Ariana Grande or anything, but, <laughs> but I hate I hate getting my picture taken. And Ross, my friend, is kind of the only person who kind of makes me feel comfortable in a shoot. And I, it's like, wham, bam, thank you, mom. I'm like, let's get it done. I turn to you like a flower leaning toward the sun. I turn to you because you're the the album he sent me the picture which ended up being my album cover and I was like, and he's like I really love this picture I was like oh, I don't like pictures of myself anyway so I was like maybe we could do something really interesting with that and then I thought I'm gonna give this image over to Jock Mooney and he created what I think is a really I love my album cover it's really like special yeah the, the stuff I mean the styling's great and what jock is it's so simple it's minimalistic Distinctive. oh yeah i love yeah. it it's it's really strong because first vibrant. impressions count when people see it that you want them to have that you know it's like a lasting effect yeah you want uh, people to I remember it. it yeah well the combination of ross at silverthorne and jock mooney i, I mean i couldn't be happier i'm i love I love that, and you know they're they're both gay men, and it's kind of I love that. I love that it's all what kind of that in the family. In the family, yeah. I wish you all the best with it. Thank and you. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. I'm me, I am me